So without further ado, uh, it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce Jesse States, director of the MPI Academy, who will be hosting a, a panel now on women in business and events making tough decisions during the corona crisis. Jesse. Hi, thank you so much, Edward. Uh, my name is Jesse States. I'm with uh, Meeting Professionals International. Welcome from wherever you're calling in from today. The greatest discussions happen when we have people participating in the chat. So say hello wherever you're calling in from today. She Means Business is a joint venture of IMAX and TW Magazine in partnership with MPI. It's an international conference about diversity, gender equality, female empowerment, not just for women in business and events, but also for our allies, our, our male counterparts. It's really celebrating, celebrating the role of women in business and events. This would have been our third conference in Frankfurt, but we're coming together and gathering today digitally from around the world. This is a brilliant opportunity that IMEX has provided for us to truly come together in a global environment. We have some partners that have come in and said they wanted to support this venture. Uh, in our current global environment with current circumstances, the crisis we're all experiencing, what an incredible group of partners to say, regardless of the challenges that we're facing right now, we want to celebrate women. We wanna celebrate the meeting and event business, and we want to come in and partner with you today. Those partners are Caesars Entertainment, which is uh, launching the two largest pillarless ballrooms in the world right now. Uh, CCH, Congress Center Hamburg in Germany, the home of hundreds of canals and, and large amounts of parkland, a beautiful space to host your meetings and events. And uh, Jerusalem, Convention and Visitors Bureau, the largest city uh, in that state and, and home to the uh, uh, Hebrew University and a host of life science and biomedical companies, a, a truly wonderful uh, opportunity to host your farm events. Uh, we thank these partners who, again, despite current circumstance, said that professional development for women in our industry is important, and we continue to support that. Our panel today consists of three amazing women who have impacted our business in very unique ways. Uh, they include Gabriela Suholsky, uh, who's the director of World Water Week. Uh, due to the coronavirus COVID-19 crisis, she had to cancel this year's World Water Week, the 30th edition of that event that happens every year in Stockholm uh, in August. Uh, so uh, that is a, um, uh, she's going to talk about her vision for the coming year and what this crisis really means for her events. We have Heike Mahud from the Congress Center Hamburg. She is involved in one of Germans, Germany's largest construction, uh, construction sites right now, is happening right now with her in, in that particular space. They have a 230 million euro renovation happening uh, right now, and they're looking forward to opening after all of this is over. And then finally, we have Karina Bauer, the CEO of IMEX Group, uh, who would have been our host and is still our host this week. Uh, they had to cancel their flagship event in Frankfurt. I was just reminiscing on Saturday that that would have been my flight here from Dallas over to, over to IMEX, uh, probably. I think it was my seventh time. So uh, interesting and, and eager to hear what she has to say. So I'd like to turn it now over uh, to, to our friend, uh, Gabriela uh, Suhokski, uh, who um, is a, a, a brilliant industry innovator. Over the past eight years, she's brought uh, her international events uh, to global attention, really, uh, involving World Water Week at the heart of international water policy through her efforts and those of the people over at World Water Week. The conference boasts now 50% participation by female water professionals and 25% of those professionals are under the age of 35. So uh, eager to, to hear your thoughts on what's happening right now and how it's impacted your events. Thank you, Jesse. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Gabriella. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Thanks for the brilliant, beautiful introduction, Jesse. I'm, I'm happy to be here, even though I'm not in Frankfurt. I'm in Stockholm, and it's 
works just as well. And I'm also very happy to be have been invited to this session. Of course, it's um, great times that we share our experiences. So this is a great opportunity. Thank you. Now, let me start by briefly introducing myself and our event um, a little bit. So as Jesse mentioned, the World Water Week is the most influential conference on water. And the event has been annually held um, and organized by CV, the Stockholm International Water Institute. We gather around 4,000 uh, participants, uh, water and development experts. And throughout the course of six days, we put together about 270 sessions. So we'd like to think that we deliver a true collaborative learning, learning experience. Myself, I've worked with the World Water Week for about nine years and in this leading position for about three years. As Jesse mentioned, during the past three years, we have truly embarked on um, a journey, I would say, where we have implemented our values into the core of our event. We work a lot with inclusivity and diversity. And we do that through active participation by women and youth and the forgotten stakeholders, because we believe that everyone should take part in the discussions, but also in providing solutions. So not only those with decision power. We have a special program for that. We call it a gold standard. And if I would have been in Frankfurt, I would have spent a lot more time to tell you about our program. Um, and I could talk about for hours about that, but please feel free to contact me after the session if you'd like to hear more about our program. Um, now, besides focusing on inclusivity and diversity, we've also worked in the past years on how can we impact and reach beyond the six day event. So we see our conference as a catalyst for action. So simply put, we see it as a movement. We aim for all of our 4,000 participants to truly apply and implement our values everything that I've learned from the event, create a 365 days conversation. So this year, we are really excited about taking our movement to the next level. Well, then we all know what happened and COVID-19 came. We were faced with the difficult decision to cancel our event and similar to many others out there in this industry. The process of canceling was of course very intense. It was difficult, tough decisions. It was um, lots of um, lessons learned and I could actually very much relate to Karina Bauer's piece on leading through crisis and beyond. So reading that story was like reading our own story. It was four days, felt like four months, with lots of feelings, emotions. It was uh, gratitude. Sorry, I'm hearing myself. So just adjusting the sound. Um, right, so, so we had a lot of support from our community, we had many lessons learned, we grew strongest together. I guess um, leadership, including my own, was challenged in very many ways. But at the end of it, um, for us, it came down to three important things, main things. We put the, healthy, uh, the health safety of the people first, so our staff, our participants, our community, um, I mean, we're hosting participants from 130 countries. So obviously there was a lot of safety and security to take into account here. We had to keep a long-term perspective, like not act in panic, make early decisions, but wise decisions. Consider the investment of our partners, our suppliers, our community, of course. And finally, obviously the quality. So how can we stay true to our values? And um, can we still deliver the content with the same high quality as we have always done? And honestly, right there and then, the answer to that was no. We could not deliver, deliver with the same quality. So even though it was a difficult decision, it was, it was the right one, we felt. And we still feel that um, it is, during, considering the circumstances, it was very much the right decision. I'm sure we can all relate to, to that today. And uh, where is that, all of this, all of this experience, where does that leave us today in the coming World War II weeks in the future? Well, maybe I should start with tell you what we're doing here, a little bit what we're doing at the moment. So we're doing a bit of house cleaning as 
we have the luxury and unfortunately some time. Um, so we're doing market research, analytical work, we're doing inventory, we're talking to our partners. Uh, we're doing a bit of soul searching, you could say. So we're there to ask big, difficult questions. This is a time when we reflect um, and we ask ourselves, what does the community see for the future? What will the industry look like in the future? What is it that we want to do and why do we want to do it? And how can we make it worthwhile for our community? So it's a very much a reflecting stage right now. We're also, also wishing we had a crystal ball where we can you know, have a look and get past all of these big uncertainties that we are experiencing at the moment. I mean, one of the biggest questions for us is, will we, able, will we be able to travel again and, and when? And will we want our community to travel the same way again now if we take into consideration the climate aspect, which is a very, very close link to our own environmental aspect and community. So will we want our community to travel the same way again? And if not, how do we bring that value to them? So these are some pretty big questions to dig into. And since we don't have a crystal ball, um, I think that our way forward is that we have decided that we will have to make some assumptions about the future and try to work with those. So we need to view our plans as moving targets for the coming years. So that would mean working with several possible scenarios at the same time. And whatever plans we make, we need to be prepared to review them a hundred times more or so before we would know exactly how we can proceed. So yeah, Thank certainly so that much. requires that we need to become more resilient, adaptive to change, uh, and you know, try to find eventually to find a new normal. Yeah, so tough, the challenges, but also taking that opportunity now to ask the right questions so that you're even more prepared for the, the future of what um, your industry looks like. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our second panelist, uh, Heike Mahout, um, who is the COO, the Chief Operating Officer over at Congress Center Hamburg. Uh, you're going, uh, you're having a, a huge uh, in renovation right now. You're going through a lot of change at your organization as a, uh, as a, a wonderful venue for meetings and events. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you're facing right now and those opportunities? I'm so curious to hear. Yeah, thank you, Jesse, and uh, thank you for having me uh, today. Um, it's, uh, I'm very proud to, to be a part of this session. Yeah, what can you expect or what did you be planned it uh, so far. The so 2020 20, uh, was planned as one of the most important year of the meetings industry in Hamburg. So the, the reopening of the CCH the Congress Center Hamburg wa was in front of us and it will be one of the largest facilities in Europe. And uh, we planned it like this, the first half of the year, uh, the Congresses were, uh, were taking part as the exhibition ground. And then um, the second half, uh, the opening, we would like to open the doors uh, with our clients, for our first clients uh, in the CCH. But then uh, COVID-19 uh, challenged us in a very, very different way. So first, uh, first, um, firstly, March completely uh, the shutdown of the exhibition uh, ground. So no events were allowed to organize due to the German government. Um, exhibitions, congresses, and even events were canceled until the end of August so far. Then our marketing activities were canceled. So we planned to have a big welcome at our Hamburg booth at IMAX this year in Frankfurt, and even to, to hold a press conference canceled. All other B2B events were canceled. And of course, we had a lot of planning for site inspections in the, at the building site. So to, to um, give our clients, our stakeholders, and also our partners a view of what uh, the new CCH looks like and how can uh, we organize Congresses in the future. It hurted a lot to, to cancel everything. 
But we uh, made our first decisions very immediately. And the first one was that we get in contact to our, client, to our clients very, very immediately and in person. So we, we called everyone uh, who has organized or would like to, to organize a Congress or event in 2020. And we had a mission or three goals uh, to can say. Um, uh, firstly, we want uh, to be a consultant and not a sales manager. The second, uh, we would like to give our clients guidance, uh, a lot of information about the new regulations in the meetings industry in Germany and of course in particular in Hamburg. And, three, uh, and uh, the third point was we would like to build um, trust with our clients and to find new solutions uh, for their events and for their um, uh, congresses as well. And we are very proud to can uh, say that we save business about over 80% uh, in the CCH in Hamburg. So that means uh, we could postpone um, the Congresses in 2021 and to the following years. So only 20% were really cancelled at this time. But without uh, the dedication of the whole team, you can't manage it. It's not possible. So it starts with the sales managers, with the sales assistants and the project manager technicians, and it will end up also with our partners, the service providers um, and um, like the catering companies. So that means um, it's a total shift uh, you have to, to go and uh, to bring uh, new ways uh, and we, we know there will be new ways uh, to, to handle all these uh, new uh, developments. And, uh, but in the center, there will stay our clients. And uh, we are really confident that face-to-face -face meetings will take part in the future, but with more value, with more meaning, more sustainability, and also more experience. So, and we work very hard on it to, to bring this on the table. I love the message of really putting your clients first uh, and, and acting as that, that consultant. Uh, how, can, how can we help to further your goals and objectives in this new normal that we are going to all experience? Uh, that's a, a beautiful message from, from your team. Finally, I'd like to introduce uh, Karina Bauer, our our fearless leader at IMX Group and certainly had to make some incredibly difficult decisions regarding uh, the Frankfurt show that we would that we would all be at right now. Uh, Karina, are eager to hear how that decision was made uh, and how, how your team is doing. Thank you, Jesse, and great to be here with everybody today. Um, so, you know, I, I, as Gabriella said, I wrote a blog for Event MB a few weeks ago, which really detailed uh, the decision making process uh, for the cancellation. And I think, just like Heike and just like Gabriella said, um, at the end of the day, um, the first thing you have to do really is look at. Um, you know, what's right for your suppliers, for your exhibitors, for the whole stakeholder, the whole ecosystem um, of the event, both in terms of the decision that you're making, but also the timings of that decision. And that was very important. So while sitting today, and even probably 24 to 48 hours after we sent out our cancellation message, it was obvious that the show had to cancel because actually the German government had um, said that no events could um, take place over a thousand people. Um, it wasn't so obvious actually for the few days leading up to that cancellation, but for us it was um, a necessity because there were two key things really one was whether we could deliver the quality of show uh, and for us that meant um, whether we could deliver a large-scale high quality hosted by a program because ultimately that's our promise to our exhibitors who um, fund the show and the second really um, was uh, looking at whether we thought there was a danger of the show being cancelled so that cancellation timings being taken out of our hands and I suppose that's one of the things in terms of looking at decision making in this age of uncertainty if you like 
I think the key thing is how do you take that control? So what can you control? Uh, and we often talk about that at IMEX, you know, control the controllables. And, and we even look at it for things like sustainability. So a lot of people, for example, say, well, you know, events aren't sustainable because people have to fly to them. Well, that's fine, but what can you control? You can uh, control the sustainability of the event when people are in your vicinity. So we often think about things in that way, and I think this is no different. You know, try to take away the uncertainties that surround decision making and look at what you can actually make decisions upon. And of course, for us, that was about taking control of the timings. What we didn't want to happen was a last minute cancellation, which is kind of the worst of all worlds for us, for our stakeholders, for our exhibitors and for the whole supplier ecosystem that makes a show like, like IMEX or World Water Week possible. And that was really top of mind. We wanted it, if, if it was going to cancel, we wanted it to be on our terms. Um, and the best possible outcome. So, yeah, so, and as Gabrielle said, you know, it was a, a very intense time. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people um, on this call today have experienced similar emotions and similar intensity um, around the decisions that they've had to make for their own businesses and events over the past few weeks. I think that's a really important lesson to share and, and probably one of the, the greatest takeaways um, is that to, to really concentrate on the things that you can control because otherwise you can feel powerless. I, my mom asked me how I was doing yesterday and I said just concentrating on the things that I can control um, because it gives you a certain ownership and a certain power. Um, when you talk about uh, what's happening right now, how do you stay resilient? What are, what are you doing? How, how, what is your team doing to, in order to stay resilient? Well, I think, um, as Gabriella said, you know, and uh, the team does tend to come together in a crisis, but it's a very intense time. And so you go through this period of coming together, having amazing team spirit, being strong as a team, but then kind of having a down because you're so tired. It's almost like that down you get after, you know, you put on a show. So we're kind of expecting that to happen to us anyway next week. We'll kind of fall, fall on the floor. I think it's really important staying resilient. There are so many things you can do. Taking control is one of them. You know, that's really important. But then there's also how you support each other as a team, the small things that you do to check in. In with your colleagues to check in with friends and family and then of course there's a lot around health and well-being that we can do um, and focusing for us as well focusing on the positive and focusing on the future I think uh, for me and for our team that's very important we had a question come in uh, from the audience in the crowd compass app uh, and that was um, in particular what what recommendations or or tips do you have for young women leaders right now? And this is for the entire group. We can start with Karina, but then I would love to hear from Gabriella and, and Heike as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, for young women leaders, um, it depends where you are in your career, of course. I would certainly say that um, anything that you can do to really upskill yourself, be really positive and future focused, look at what those skills are that are going to be needed in the future um, and how you can position yourself to really take advantage and be the person that someone's going to want to deliver those um, skills for their business. So take this opportunity now, as Gabriella said, it's a time for reflection and it's also a time for upskilling. So, so do that now and you'll be in a better position later. Gabriella? Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks. Um, I, I agree with uh, Karina. I think this is a great time to also test your leadership skills. So just being there for someone, that's great leadership, listening, taking in there are so many emotions and uh, time of crisis so really all kinds of support you can provide is leadership and so it's right there and have to go look for it practice i would say over and, this, and um especially um i see uh, especially for young uh, ladies and women uh, you are in a, a new generation I think we may have frozen, uh, but I'll, I'll ask an, I'll ask another uh, question. Different can... associations. Uh, 
we can come back to Heike. Um, what is your biggest learning, uh, Gabriella, from this time? We, now is a, a great time of, of challenge, but also of opportunity to, to really learn new things about ourselves as leaders. Uh, what, what have you learned? Uh, thank you. Well, I, first of all, I think I've learned a lot about myself. Um, mostly discovering strengths that I haven't didn't know I had or haven't been able to use in a long time because you're going through a World War Week that's been put on for 30 years. So really the process is you follow uh, this crisis demanded something extra. So I'm really happy for that. I discovered the strength of our team and collaboration and the partnerships that we have with our community. But also maybe we should have had a better crisis plan. So all kinds of lessons learned, I would say. And um, right now, the experience is mostly positive, I would say. Karina, what about you? Yeah, well, uh, um, very similar experience to Gabriella, I think, in terms of, um, you know, I guess I have learned, I think I am resilient, you know, so that was, that's good, that's a positive. Our team has been enormously resilient, as Gabriella said, you know, seeing the team come together, you learn what you can really achieve as a team. I think what's also been a massive learning curve for myself and also for our team is just putting together a digital event. You know, we, we did a few things on digital, uh, but not just a digital event we've gone for the full work you know we, we don't just have today we've got um, weeks of e events and activities planned we've uh, created planet IMEX uh, in just a few weeks and it's been uh, tough and it's been hard um, but I think what I've learned and what the team's learned is because when you do events you know your, your um, daily life is very cyclical and, and we almost don't need the project plans and the timelines that we have we kind of wake up on the 1st of February. We know what it is that we need to do in February. It's ingrained into you. So putting on something like this has um, made us learn all of that again. And it's felt like a startup at times. And um, that's been both challenging and exciting, I think. Um, but a huge learning curve. Certainly. So what, what does it... Why is... Why does why do women's leadership matter right now? Why why is it important for women um, to why is it diversity important in this particular moment? And I'll I'll start with you, Karina, because you're on, and then and then maybe Gabriella can respond as well. I think, you know, maybe women's leadership is having a moment at this point in time. You see countries in the world where there are uh, women leaders in charge who are doing particularly well in this uh, COVID situation. And I think I don't just mean about how they're dealing with the health situation and how many cases they have, because we all know that that could go up and down over the next few months. What I mean really is the emotional intelligence that they show, the transparency that they show, the honesty that they show in dealing with their population. Populations. And I think that's something, uh, not all women have that, but I think that's something that is highly uh, characterized by women's leadership, by good women's leadership. I think it's very needed at this point in time. It's needed whether you're running a country or a company of 20 people. Either way, you can practice that same leadership style. And I think that's what people want and need and deserve to have at the moment. Gabriella, what are your thoughts about women in leadership right now and why it's a particularly important time for us? Well, let me um, give my perspective from a water perspective. So our water world, of course, um, as I mentioned before, diversity and inclusion, it's, for us it's important that women and youth are part of the decision maker because they're also part of the victims. So say women and youth, children carry the water from the wells miles and miles that don't have access to water so obviously making decisions without them being part of those decisions and bringing solutions um, is not relevant to them always um, so and the studies show that when women and youth are involved in making those decisions we actually find more efficient and effective solutions because they apply to those in need and um, I think that that says enough for now actually from our water perspective thank you Absolutely. Uh, so, so uh, last last tips just for surviving crisis. Uh, you talked about your lessons. You talked about the importance of, of women's leadership. 
I'm going to um, unmute Heike. Perhaps she's she's able to come back on. Um, but if you just had to to share one last thing with a global audience right now, we're all struggling. We're all facing this similar challenges to greater or lesser degree. What what message would you leave now with with our with our participants today? I'll start with Karina. Um, yeah, I think, um, I guess to a degree it would be about going back to that message of taking control. So looking at the long term, not just the short term, really thinking about your business or your role. How, what does that look like in the long term? And how can you control things to create the most positive possible outcome for you? So I do believe in op being optimistic about our industry's resilience for the long term. So really just thinking, you know, doing that scenario planning, taking back control with whatever that means for you and your business and really thinking through those different scenarios and making sure you're ready for them. Gabriella, uh, last last thoughts or advice for dealing with yes. what we're, the challenge we're facing? Thank you. Yeah, I can completely agree with Karina there, keeping the, the long-term perspective. So um, having that long-term vision in mind, even though we need to have an adjustable suit in, for a year or two and making sure we know where the feeling um, where the industry is headed. It, it, you need to have long-term perspective. What is it that you want to achieve with your event? What is the experience you want to deliver? So keeping that in mind at all times, I think that will steer everybody in the right direction at the end, staying to three or values. Heike, are you able to come back and, and perhaps join us? I know your mic is on now, but your video isn't. So uh, last minute thoughts, if, you, if you're able. I don't know that she is able to rejoin us. I just want to take a moment to thank everybody for joining us for this uh, panel of industry leaders and, and uh, women leaders. There are so many lessons for us to take away from this crisis and to focus on uh, what we can change and how we can change and the future of our industry is, is this is the moment to do that. Um, so thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the day. I'm going to turn it back over to our moderator, Edward, for some, uh, for some last minute housekeeping and for what to do next. Thank you so incredibly much. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks a lot.